How many carbs can you eat in a day to maintain or lose weight? Well, this simple unsalted cracker might just tell you. That is according to Dr. Sharon Malalam, who proposed in his book, The DNA Restart, that the speed at which a saltine cracker breaks down in your mouth determines how well your body breaks down carbohydrates and therefore how many you can eat in a day without suffering consequences like weight gain. Now you might be thinking that sounds silly. I agree, it does sound silly, but I listened to his book and his argument and I was intrigued enough to eat a few crackers. If you are intrigued as well, watch this video, learn the mechanism behind the experiment, try it at home, and let me know your results and your thoughts. And if you're skeptical of this method, I will discuss other ways to determine your carb tolerance. So let's get started. Dr. Malalam proposed that the best way to eat is to eat for your specific genetic profile. That profile was passed down to you from your ancestors. If your ancestors ate a lot of starch, such as wheat or rice, you inherited multiple copies of the Amy one gene. This gene is in charge of producing salivary amylase, which is the enzyme in saliva that breaks down starchy foods like potatoes, bread, rice, cereal, and crackers. Having extra copies of the Amy one gene gives you a carb intake advantage because you can quickly digest starch. Now, if you've been learning about carbohydrate metabolism, that might sound counterintuitive. You'd be thinking that faster carb digestion would mean that sugar gets into your bloodstream too fast, leaving you more prone to high blood sugar levels, insulin resistance, and obesity. However, when this was studied, researchers found the opposite happened. Those with more amylase had lower blood glucose or blood sugar levels. Why? Because those individuals also had a quicker insulin response. So the sugar that came into the blood was efficiently cleared out and shuttled to the cells. Dr. Malalam developed a simple test that he calls the DNA reset cracker self-test. The result you get determines the amount of carbohydrates you can eat to stay in line with the number of Amy one genes you've inherited, placing you in one of three categories, full consumption, moderate consumption, or restricted consumption. To run through the test, I enlisted the help of my husband, Keith, who will join me in a moment. If you have a saltine cracker with an unsalted top and you want to do the test along with us, we invite you to do so. I'm not sure why, but the test asks you to consume half of a cracker. So break it apart before you begin. It doesn't have to be a perfect break. If you can't eat a cracker for whatever reason, substitute a dime-sized piece of raw peeled potato. The objective is to chew the cracker for 30 seconds and make a note of when the taste changes. And you'll likely note it changes from bland to subtly sweet. If the 30 seconds go by and you never detect a change in taste, that's fine and has significance, so just go with it. And keep in mind that the cracker will dissolve in your mouth, but you want to keep chewing for the full time period. So fight the urge to swallow and just keep chewing it as if it were chewing gum. And one last note, you will perform the test three times and then average your results. So anything that feels uncertain right now will become clear. Alrighty, you all set? All set. All right, great. Thanks for being here to help me with the cracker test. Are Always excited? happy to be a guinea pig. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's make sure we have all of our things. And I'm going to walk you through the test so people at home can walk, can do the test along with us. Okay. All right. So make sure you have half of a cracker. So go ahead and break your cracker. Oh, it, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be better than that. No, that's, that's That's pretty good. Okay. Now... We need to have the half cracker, a timer for 30, set for 30 seconds, and a notepad just so you can re record the, the, uh, your time. But you can keep a mental note for right now. So I just note the time. Yeah, just note it. When watch watch right. the time and note it. Okay, you ready to begin? Yep. Okay, put your cracker in your mouth. Start the timer. And chew. Now, pay close attention so that you note when there's a change from subtly... Um, from like bland to subtly sweet and then note that time All right keep chewing don't swallow if you go the whole 30 seconds that's fine that's we'll cover that at the end just make note of that all right that is it okay, can I swallow now? you can swallow <laughs> you can swallow it not now. much of that cracker left no 
All right, so uh, we are going to now do, both of us, I'm going to join in, and we'll both go uh, do that test three times, and we will pause the video right now and, and come back and do that if you would like to do that as well. We will see you in just a couple moments. All right, Keith will rejoin me in a moment to share our personal cracker test results. First, let's go over what your results reveal. Once you have performed the test three times, average your results and you have identified your personal carbohydrate consumption category. If the taste change happened in less than 14 seconds, you fall into the full carbohydrate consumption category. If it happened between 15 to 30 seconds, you are in the moderate category. If the taste did not change or took longer than 30 seconds to change, you're in the restricted category. Now that you know your category, here is the amount of carbs you can consume daily according to Dr. Malalam. If your category is full, 50% of your calories can come from carbohydrates. If your category is moderate, you can have up to 35% of your calories coming from carbs. If your category is restricted, no more than 25% of your calories should come from carbohydrates. The Cracker test is a simple test and simple tests are fun. However, Dr. Malalam does attach the caveat that this is just a guide and you do need to be mindful of the amount and quality of food you eat regardless of your category. Many of our modern foods have been refined and stripped of the nutrients needed for health and weight control. To truly get a handle on your individual carbohydrate tolerance, there is no better tool than a CGM. A CGM is a small monitor that easily attaches to your arm and continually records your blood sugar. Levels makes it possible for people without diabetes to get this preventative tool, which you can use to get a clear visual map of how your body handles carbohydrates throughout the day. What you want to see, even after eating carbs, is a gentle rise and return to normal over a couple of hours. If instead you see a sharp rise and slow return, your body is not tolerating the carbohydrates in your diet efficiently. A challenge is that the cost of wearing CGMs can be prohibitive. With Level's newly added app-only experience, you can use their standalone software features without having to invest in a CGM. This app-only feature provides meal scores and insights based on average glucose responses from the Levels community. It is a perfect entry point for learning about your metabolic health. If you use my link, levels.link forward slash Dr. Becky, you'll get an additional two free months of the Levels annual membership. Now, when it comes to macros, it's very easy to get caught up in numbers. However, because carbohydrate tolerance depends on many factors that are unique to you, including your age, activity level, past diet and health history, and genetics, it is important to pay attention to cues you get from your body when you eat carbs. Your brain and body love routine, so much so that you likely find yourself eating the same foods on most days and eating them at about the same time each day. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, having a healthy routine keeps you healthy and saves you time and effort. But when was the last time you consciously linked those foods and the timing of your meals to how you feel? If you experience daily periods where you feel mentally and physically tired or have heightened cravings, you'll want to look at the amount or quality of carbohydrates you're eating. You may be overlooking a direct connection simply because it's what you've always done. Make today the day that you bring conscious awareness to how you feel. For instance, how do you feel an hour after eating a big lunch? How do you feel three hours after lunch with little food left in your belly? You can gain valuable clues about your carbohydrate tolerance by simply monitoring how you feel. Also, keep in mind that your body is a dynamic machine. As a low carb dieter, you may notice that your carb tolerance goes up or down as you continue to follow your diet. For instance, when you first switch from a high carb to a low carb way of eating, it is a big change for your body requiring a lot of energy. As you progress, your body becomes more efficient at burning fat for energy, relying less on carbohydrates. This is what you want, but you may find that your carb tolerance is lower. And remember that efficiency is not a bad thing. In fact, as you continue to feed your body an unrefined low carb diet and include things like intermittent fasting and exercise, your cells become more insulin sensitive, 
leading to a more efficient handling of carbohydrates. Okay, we both ran through the test three times and averaged our time to note when the taste changed from bland to subtly sweet. What was your time? My average was 17 seconds. Okay, mine was over 30. I never, I never detected it. Really? No. Wow. Yeah, so that puts you in the middle range. So it was between 15 and 30 seconds. So you're in the moderate consumption category according to that. Okay. And I'm in the restricted carbohydrates. So you can eat up to 35% of your daily calories from carbohydrates. I can only eat 25% or, okay. or less. So do you think that measures up with how our lives are as far as carb tolerance? Well, I would definitely say that I eat a few more carbs than I ever used to. And I seem to be I have no problem controlling my weight or anything. Yeah. But when you first lost weight six years ago or whatever, you did it by strict keto. I couldn't even have a pinch of carbohydrate in my mm -hmm. diet when I first started. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is interesting. You were very insulin resistant. So yeah. perhaps you've gotten some insulin sensitivity back. Now for me, I've never really gone keto for long periods of time. I dip into it from time to time and intermittent fasting produces ketones for me just naturally but i tend to eat more in the 60 to 70 carbs per day range and, and always have so yeah i i don't know i guess but i'm i don't know it's it's interesting it's i don't know that i would yes be in the restricted and you'd be in the moderate and you know so how much credence can you put on it if you're curious i was wearing my level cgm when i when we did this test we did it first thing in the morning so there wasn't other food in my system to uh, influence what my blood sugar was going to do having said that we ate literally a cracker and a half right running through yeah. the test three times so that is not a substantial meal my blood sugar rose 16 milligrams per deciliter over the the two hours after eating it which I mean, it's not a lot of food, but that was a little bit of a, a rise. I would wonder what would happen if I had eaten five, which is like a serving. Yeah, it wasn't a zero effect. It wasn't a zero effect. So, and I would put more credence in what is my blood sugar actually doing after I eat carbohydrates to, to determine my carbohydrate tolerance, rather than maybe a little bit more of a subjective test like we just did here. But here's the thing, right? So the, so the, the cracker test is a is an easy test. It's an interesting test. It's intriguing. So do it. Uh, we encourage you to do it. And, and it was fun. I hope you enjoyed this video. But build on what you learn from that by judging how you feel after carbohydrates and also consider watching your blood sugar response after a meal or after eating a carbohydrate. Right. And, and if you do want uh, a good guide uh, for low carb foods. We have a list of 100 low carb foods. It's available for free on our website. Yeah. And uh, it, it's it's a great way to kind of put you on that path. Yep. Yep. It's a nice, it's a nice guide to have. Uh, we will leave a link for that in the video description or more area below the video along with a, a link to Levels. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your cracker. Have a great rest of your day. See ya.